everyone i am here in san francisco i know you can't see my face this is my face right here but the reason i'm filming right now is because i actually want to introduce y'all to my boss and i want to ask him some tough questions about college no college what developers need to do what is considered a good developer and etc so hopefully this gives you some good content and helps you out let's go all right everyone what is up so I want to introduce you to someone special. I hired him not too long ago. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is actually my boss, the director of developer relations here at New Relic. Yeah, this is Jonan. Hi, I'm Jonan. I'm the director of developer relations at New Relic. <laughs> yes, now you know. Um, so a lot of people have been asking, like, I should interview my boss. So this is my only chance to interview you in front of a good camera. <laughs> it's, very, it's a pretty good camera. You should see this thing. He's got a massive camera. Yeah, so it's a really good camera. But yeah, I, so I just want to like interview, ask you questions that can hopefully bring value to our audience. Just so y'all know, um, when I quit my last job, Jonan is the one who actually DM'd me on Twitter and saying, hey, I think you'd be a good fit for this position. He told me that I would be streaming for a living, making videos for a living, creating content for a living. I thought he was lying. Eight months later, I'm still here, and he wasn't lying. <laughs> Didn't make it up. Yeah. <laughs> also, that was a really good choice on my part, right? Did we all agree? <laughs> I, I think it was a good choice. Yeah. So what happened, if you, you don't remember, I quit my last job because it was toxic. Right. And even though it would have hurt me financially big time, I quit that job. And as little, literally a couple days later, after I tweeted, you DM'd me. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, how did that happen? Like, you saw my tweet on Twitter or? Yeah. So I had been following you because I saw some of your videos before, right? Like I went and followed him early on to when you were talking about uh, your journey, like coming into the software. And yeah, yeah I, I had a rough ride getting here too. I came later in my life, a non traditional background for sure. And it spoke to me as a developer. Like you, uh. you were particularly inspiring to me. So one, I know you create inspiring content, <laughs> right? Two, I know that like you have enough self-respect mm. to walk away from a toxic situation like mm. that. And in doing a little bit more research about like your audience and the people who you have managed to surround yourself uh, yeah. with, it was pretty obvious to me this was a good place for you. I mean, wow. was it a bad choice? I don't think no, you would I think mean, so. People actually mention this to me often. Was it only because I have a following on YouTube? No, I mean, it was definitely the hair, right? I was like, <laughs> sick hair. No, I think um, like YouTube following is important, but it's like anything, right? If you try and in Devrel, Devrel is kind of a weird industry, but Chris has told you a lot about it. But like, if you try and measure anyone by a single facet of their platform mm. or their audience, you're going to probably make pretty poor decisions, right? I, yeah. I choose authentic. That's mm. why I chose. I chose that you're here to show up for the community in an authentic, honest way. That's what we want to do in yeah. That's the goal. Wow. That's interesting. I mean, that's awesome. that's humbling to hear. Thank you for that, by the way. I think I'm pretty authentic too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I authentic or what? Look at um, all this. <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not, but no, I try to be authentic. Yeah. authentic. That's my main goal. And, and I'm curious, like, for other people who want to be developers, yeah. not just DevRel, let's just say software engineering. Yeah. To junior developers, mid-level, whatever, these are all types of people who watch my channel. Let's say you're working for an engineer, this was an engineering team. What are the main things that you look for in a developer? Oh, that's a really good question, actually. Yeah. Um, I look for people who are hungry to learn. Really? That's the first thing you look for? That's the first thing I look for. I how, look do you, for how do you know if they're hungry? Well, there are a lot of ways to find out, right? Yeah. But I, I think hopefully you get a feel for that when you're talking to someone that they are actually driven to find a solution, right? There's a certain type of developer who you talk to who very rarely says, like, this is a thing that can't be done. Yeah. I want to hire that person. I want to find the person who's willing to find the creative solution. Oh. There are a thousand reasons to say no to anything, yeah. right? Find the person who more often than not tries to find a way to say yes. Is that, I feel like that's kind yeah. of an ambiguous statement. I, yeah. 
Uh, so like, are there other ways too? Like, do you look at the the GitHub? Do you sure is the one like let's say someone apl applies for a position? Do you automatically look at their GitHub or what do you what do you look for right off the bat? I'm definitely gonna Google you. It's the internet, right? Really? Like yeah. I'm gonna look you up for sure. Yeah, yeah especially if I'm interested at a glance. But mm. it, as a hiring manager, you see a lot of resumes and they just kind of fly past, right? Um, wait, wait, wait. What flies past? Like what in resumes do you see? It? This is just like everyone else's. I don't want to look. I'm curious. Wow. Uh, <laughs> okay, so like the resumes, like. <laughs> There's probably someone who's applied for a job here watching this and they're like, why specifically do you ignore my, my resume? Okay, so um, there's a lot of really good advice for how to write a good resume oh. on the internet, but yeah. I'm looking for people who have, honestly, like a story somehow. Like they put something in an objective at the top of the, res top of the resume that grabs my attention. Like I want to oh. see like... That works. I am Well, yeah, I want to know that you are not just interested in doing uh, writing software somewhere. I want to yeah. know that you are interested in writing software here with uh. me on the work that we're doing. Yeah. That you have taken the time to do a modicum of research. The kinds of things that, that I scroll past are the yeah. ones that are like so generic as to be bland mm. or very clearly seeking something that I can't offer. My number one concern is that you're gonna be happy in the role because if you're happy, you're going to be productive and we're all gonna have a yeah. great time working together. If you're unhappy, yeah. I, I'm actually like harming you and the world collectively by hiring you. Why would I do that? And if I could attest, like that from one on one meetings we have every week, that you that's your number one goal with me. And like when I try to do more work, you're telling me stop. With, you're telling me to take vacations. Yeah, <laughs> take more vacations. And I haven't taken. <laughs> he works so much, so much. It's ridiculous. I haven't taken a vacation. I take a, I took a vacation. Fridays off. Yeah, for a couple of weeks. Someday you might make a video about burnout or something. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Oh uh, yeah. Maybe I'll make a video on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess another good question is, and I think this is something everyone, a lot of people ask me, what are turnoffs? Things that say no, I'm not immediately, just from the resume alone and from an in-person interview. Okay, so there's one thing that's kind of a, this is unfair because I did this on my very first personal website. I hope no one ever finds it. <laughs> but like the thing where you rate your His name is Jonin, if you're wondering. Go, yeah, go, don't go go that. Um, <laughs> Jonin show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing where you rate your skills, you're like ranking your skills. If you have written JavaScript, this is not a time to be humble. I am asking you to mm. highlight your strengths. Put JavaScript on your way. They'll put JavaScript two out of five stars. The stars thing is over the top. Yeah. Talk about the things that you are able to do confidently, knowing in that JavaScript. you're going to grow into the role. Exactly. Or whatever in JavaScript, in oh. Python. If you could write an application yeah. in a day yeah. with Python, uh -huh. put Python down on the resume, list your skills and not the ones that are common. If I see a lot of ones that are like HTML, CSS and the job is for an, a web application. Yes. Well, you, put, uh, you, you should know HTML. If yeah. you're writing web applications and you don't so know you, HTML. Yeah, you shouldn't even put that in because it's, it's given. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. don't write the things that are obvious. It looks like fluff. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, that's true, okay. Right. For the resume piece. Yes. And the other piece about being in person, ego. Really? Is dangerous. So like what kind of ego are you talking about? If People who. an example are unable to admit that they don't know a thing during an interview. What I want to hear oh, if I ask a question, true. you know what the answer is to like, oh, I, I'm actually not sure, but I think it's this. I mean, you've got to tell me though, because I'm curious, right? Yeah. What you've just demonstrated to me is you are willing to admit that you're wrong, wow. that you are hungry, yeah. right? Yeah. Insatiably curious, wow. and, and that you are interested in learning along with me, yeah. right? The basic picture is like, look, your job needs these five skills, and maybe I only have these two, but where I don't have them, I'm willing to grow into it with mm. you. With the, I've actually done that fingers thing in yeah. the interview before. Just demonstrate your willingness to grow. That's interesting because, of course, not everyone is like you when it comes to that point. Because I'm, I remember when I've done plenty of technical interviews that I got rejected, a lot of times I'm terrified to say I don't know, but I have said that. I don't know the answers to that. Yeah. You got to do it, and you, that, and you like that. You, if you if you fake it, it's going to be obvious to me. Oh, which is worse? Way worse. That's true. Don't fake it. And you can tell it's very easy to tell if someone doesn't know something. Yeah, very easy. And if they have set it up to be like a quiz show, mm -hmm. it's probably not a great employer anyway. When they like create the pressure cooker environment where there's mm. three people interviewing you and they're like, write a linked list implementation in Python on the whiteboard um, in front of us. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So you, you probably don't want to work there. Now I'm not going to tell you where to work. If you got to go there and suffer <laughs> for a year, we've all had bad jobs. Go yes. do the thing so you can yeah. move on. But what a whiteboarding interview should be ideally is an opportunity for you to work collaboratively with someone who's your potential peer. I want to uh, know what it's going to be like yeah. to work with you on a software team. So Chris, let's pretend to build an app that does this. Yeah. And then you and I come up with ideas. Maybe we write a little mm. sample code, scratching it out. I don't care about the syntax. This is not a time for me to be like, 
well, I typed it all into this computer over here and you missed a semicolon, so yeah. no, right? <laughs> if that's the point of the interview, then they're doing it wrong. Yeah. And moreover, it's an indicator to you that you likely don't want to work there. I have often said that people who do those kind of interviews, companies are companies I don't want to work with because that yeah. doesn't always show everything about that person as a developer. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, okay. I know we've had a really long day, but I want to ask you two more questions. Please. Two yeah. more questions. Okay. From your experience, what's one thing you can do to really show that you have the potential? Because you have no experience yet as a junior developer. Or right. Inspiring. Yeah. So do you have any suggestions for You should have experience already, right? Like if you're applying for a junior developer job, you've written some code. The barrier to entry there is, do you have some code in public that I can check out? Do you have, mm. I, I hesitate to say that a GitHub profile is like the end all and be all of hiring software engineers, but the reality is it's a very convenient place to demonstrate yeah. that you have written some things and it doesn't need to be good if I'm gonna hire you, I probably am gonna glance at it. I'm not gonna go and read every line of the code in your 50 repos. Yeah. I have every trash repo I've ever written. I think my first app is still up on my GitHub. I imagine you all are gonna go read show. it. Yeah, please don't, <laughs> please don't use any of that code if you do read through it. It's just a dumping ground for me to demonstrate that I yeah. do this thing sometimes. I think that getting in the door is largely a part of, of finding the door. Mm. Most people paper the world with resumes. Yeah you're never gonna get through that way. Mm. I, if you have a referral coming to a job, I will interview you 100% of the time. You've done that here too. I have, and maybe it doesn't end up in a job, but mm -hmm. getting past that resume screen and that recruiter discussion is nine tenths of the hard part about getting a job, mm. right? Like yeah. almost all of your rejections have happened before ever talking to a human. Yep. Yeah. A lot of them. A lot of them, yeah. right? You've got to get past that resume screen to get in the door. And that involves a lot of research. And sometimes it feels yeah. creepy and almost stalkerish. And I'm like looking up people's LinkedIn profiles <laughs> and figuring out what they're into at meetups. Well, that's but part of it. You have to get to know the person to. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And, and it demonstrates an interest in the company. That you know what we're up to and you know the vision and the goals of the team. That's important to me that you care. And does it impress you when someone goes above and beyond to research about more about the company and then in particular your team? Absolutely. That, wow, okay, this person put in the extra effort why not give them that opportunity for an extra interview? Sure. One last question then. Okay, so Jonan, so you got your first job professionally 10 years ago? That's true, yes. Do you want me to talk about that? No, go ahead, it's totally oh, really? fine, yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. How old were you when you got, first got hired? I came into software when I was 32 years old, having previously 32. been a poker dealer, yeah. So that was 10 years, <laughs> you were a poker dealer before. Is, yeah. I could picture you as a poker dealer, no <laughs> offense. So that's 10 years ago, now today, 2021. Someone who's 32, 33, 34, 35 years old. Is that too late? Oh, no. No, I talk to 50 year olds who are learning to code all the time. 60. Really? 65. 65. year old woman I spoke to the other day who's learning to code today. What? And she's trying to get a job? She will get a job. Uh, I assure you, she will absolutely really? get a job because she wants it. That's pretty, that's, that's, hap that's encouraging here. Even for me, it's not too late. It's all about the value you can bring to a company. What do you have to lose? You are yeah. not, you are not professionally employed as a software engineer today. Tomorrow yeah. you will still not be. Yeah. So why not shoot your shot? Give it a try. I, that's so true. I have a strong feeling that you'll like it. It's a wonderful industry. It really is. And one thing I want to share, uh, one thing that you said to me that's always hit me ever since I first spoke to you was that your goal is to help the next bag grad at a grocery store be, realize they can be the next Bill Gates, the next whoever out there. You and I have this in common mm. in that we both were in places in our lives where our lives became so complicated and demoralizing just in their own mm. existence yeah. that, that we couldn't pick ourselves up yeah. and bring ourselves here. And it happens by small degrees. You carve out mm. that extra 20 minutes on your lunch break to just try and write a little code and yeah. it becomes fun and it drives you and it takes work. Believe yeah. me, it takes work. A lot but of work. Sacrifice. You've got to make space, right? Yeah. You've got to make space in your life. We tell the world to lift themselves up by their bootstraps. This is American dream is fundamentally broken. You come yeah. home after a 12 hour shift in a factory, you are not going to sit down and read a programming bug, right? Yeah, well, definitely. It's just not the reality. I know for certain that we have geniuses in this country bagging the groceries. Who don't realize it. Who don't realize it and don't have yes. the time and energy and capacity to grow their skills. Mm -hmm. Gotta find a way to help those people and that's why we have Chris Shaw. Should every developer have a Twitter account? Do you think that they should have some form of presence? I would recommend it. If, you, if you're starting from scratch, create a Twitter account, create a GitHub account, create mm -hmm. a portfolio site. Those all three should be named the same thing, which yeah. is your future internet handle and unique enough that you can get it on every social platform. I'm the Jonan Show everywhere. You're Chris nice Shaw everywhere. 
Okay. <laughs> don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe uh, to The Jonah Show. I don't produce that much content. This man is the one you want to watch. Absolutely get on Twitter because it's a huge community of developers. Mm -hmm. You can find thousands, hundreds of thousands of developers out there talking about what they're doing all day long. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with the people you want to grow to be like. And that get can help there. you get a job much more easily. I mean, absolutely. You reach out. I didn't even apply. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. Awesome. Um, is there any last words, uh, uh, Jonah, that you want to share with the audience? I want to share with you just to keep fighting for it. This mm. is a struggle. I know that some nights it feels like you're not going to make it. I promise you will. <sighs> yeah. And welcome to software. We're glad you're here. Awesome. Uh, Jonah, thank you yeah. for this. I don't know how to end this casually. <laughs> but uh, this is Krishan. This is a, in the Jonah Show. Uh, if, you, if you all can, follow Jonah everywhere. Literally, Jonah Show. Uh, honestly, the best boss I've had to this date. Very understanding. And he's the reason I'm here. I got Not a shirt anyone. right here. Best oh, yeah. Devrel boss right there. Yes, I didn't design that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Good. cool. Awesome. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.